Now the symptom of this amplifier, the right channel is severely distorted, left channel for the moment seems to be playing okay. So the first thing we do is pull off this bottom cover. It gives you some very nice access to the bottom of the amp. They don't make things like this anymore. What a shame. Nice and easy to look at and work on. Now I'm going to show you the way I usually look at a board. I would normally use my benchtop magnifying light. And in addition to that, I have a much smaller magnifier and I would be looking at this board through these two magnifiers. We need a real three-hand job here. And I would be looking through the smaller one. Very difficult to film, but well, it actually works. This is how I would normally do it. Now on this amp, I kind of noticed that in this area, was burned. Not terribly burned, but burned. It's darker. It's darker on the top of the board and also on the bottom. And when you look here in the area of, see if we can get this in focus, this is Q951. I'll try to capture some USB microscope pictures of this so you can actually see what's going on in this area. Now m many guys talk about cold solder joints. What we're looking at here are cracked solder joints. You can clearly see rings between the lead that comes through the board and the solder pad. And this whole area, see if we can get this to move up. This whole area is in trouble. Q951, C957, but that area appears to be in common to both amplifiers, both the left and right side, so I, I don't think that that's my immediate problem. So we'll look up here where the driver transistors are. Usually when there's a, an amplifier out, you expect smoke and flame and fire and shorted components that are easy to find. That wasn't the case here. There's nothing shorted. Fuses aren't blown, the drivers look good, the output transistors look good. But when you flip the board down and you look at it from this side, these joints are physically cracked. So look at the drivers on this side, Q707, Q705, you can see how the solder does not flow between the lead and the pad, and on close examination you can actually see cracks there. Let's come across to the other side. Okay, here's the other side. Q757. Q755. Look at that emitter junction. Look at the device right next to it. 
Now, just below 755, there's a nice clean solder pad with a nice flowing little dome of solder. Look at the device right next to it. This amplifier is loaded with cracked solder joints. Uh, that, that right there, Q764, looks pretty good. Look back here. This is a great deal of work because you can't just fix what's causing the immediate problem. All of these joints have to be repaired. Because even if you get it working today, it'll just fail again tomorrow. Okay, the board has been completely resoldered. We're looking at the area of Q951. Quite a difference from from before. Uh, let's look at some of these other areas that were done. Okay, here's Q755. Here's what the little daughter board connections look like. This is right below it. These were quite cracked. Here's the other side, Q707. If you're not seeing anything alarming, well, that was... that's the plan. Q705. Seven oh seven daughter board. Nothing jumping out now. You can still see a little bit of the burning on the emitter of Q705. Spent a lot of time on this. Let's take an overall look at the board. So here's the general view. The big difference here is that there's nothing jumping out. All the joints look the same. The entire board looks like it just came off the assembly line. That's what it's supposed to look like. Okay, so I'm really happy with how this looks. Let's hook it up and see what it sounds like. Well, we've got it all back together, and it's it's all hooked up with the DVD player here. Here's our original symptom, so we can remind ourselves what was wrong with it. Right channel is out. Well, let's hopefully, let's make that past tense. Let's hope it's going to be was out. Okay, here's the moment of truth. Let's make it go. Try the balance. Well, it sounds great. We've got both channels. I've actually played this amplifier all day yesterday. It's a tremendous amp, 125 watts per channel, RMS, total harmonic distortions less than 0.9%. It sounds great, and there was nothing wrong with it except for bad solder work. So hopefully it's going to last for many, many years. It's nice and clean. Sounds terrific. There's nothing whatsoever to complain about on it now. And I'm quite happy to have it. So I hope you uh, learned something from this video. Remember that when people are talking about cold solder joints, uh, 
that term doesn't really mean much because does that mean a good solder joint is a hot solder joint? No. What you really have are high resistance solder joints. They also talk about dry solder joints. Well, does that mean that a good solder joint is wet? Uh, no, you, you don't have wet and dry solder joints. What you have are either high resistance solder joints because as the metal turns that dull a crumbly color, it gets high resistance. So that's like putting little resistors in the circuit. And the circuit doesn't call for those little resistors. So um, I, I think better terms would be open solder joints and high resistance solder joints. Cold and wet, in my experience, they don't communicate much to uh, someone who's trying to learn this. So that really there's no such thing as as cold and dry solder joints. And there's no such thing as hot and wet solder joints. But you do have high resistance solder joints that cause problems, which is what we saw here. And you do have open solder joints, which is what causes problems. And we saw that here also. Now the solder work looks factory fresh and gorgeous, actually better than factory. The thing sounds great. Let's just turn it up again. Fabulous. So, okay, there you go. There's your solder joint lesson. Thanks for watching.